Hello and welcome back to Orient today. That does not look like my idea of fun, uh, being <laughs> out in the cold <laughs> golfing. But uh, are you a golfer? I am. I enjoy golf. Yeah. I don't know if I'd enjoy golf in this, uh, <laughs> this temperature, but... <laughs> <laughs> joining oh us gosh. now is Ben Kirby, uh, superintendent of Lake Orion Community Schools. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Um, before we get into our main topic, we rolled a video clip of uh, Mary Angelopoulos. Uh, she was your predecessor before you came in as superintendent. Any memories, any thoughts you want to share on uh, Marion? Well, many of the uh, staff that I work with was blessed to, to work with her. I was not. I uh, definitely was aware of the impact that she made. Uh, over 50 years of education, you yeah. know, she's really made a difference uh, for a lot of children, a lot of staff, uh, and the people that worked worked with her really, really appreciated her. Um, so she clearly uh, put a good team in place. Uh, the team I inherited is one that uh, that our whole community can be be proud of. So you come in smack dab in the middle of COVID. So you <laughs> face some challenges uh, coming into this district, um, but it's been an amazing uh, ten years so far with new construction and improvements to schools. Um, what has it been like uh, being superintendent since you've come on board? Yeah, we're really blessed to have a very supportive community. We, again, we have a great staff. Um, yeah, coming in the middle of COVID was definitely maybe not the most opportune time, <laughs> but the best thing about it is it can only get better. Yeah, and, exactly. And so uh, one of the things uh, that we really felt like we were trying to do is is really just manage conflict through through that. There was so much, uh, you know, a lot of different thoughts about things, yeah. uh, but we continue to uh, educate uh, to our maximum uh, potential, and we continue to do the bond projects and continue to you know improve our buildings. We've uh, built two buildings during that wow. time frame, Early Childhood Center and Blanche Sims, and those are just beautiful facilities, and we thank the community for that support. How is that possible? How are these new developments? possible. Now there's a difference between the bond and the millage. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. There's School funding is very complicated and that's part of the reason that we're doing two uh, millage proposals at one time. A lot of the work that, that I'm doing when I'm going out is really helping people understand how schools are funded. So we get money from the state of Michigan through uh, the Per Pupil Foundation, but that uh, portion of that money, the 18 mills, which is the non-homestead, we have to get from our local community in order to get the full foundation allowance. If our community doesn't support the non-homestead and the 18 mills, we can't send 18 mills to the state of Michigan to turn around and send us back, plus the additional funds. So if we ever fall below that 18 mills, we aren't sending enough, therefore the state doesn't send us enough back, mm -hmm. so we don't get a full foundation allowance if this non-homestead millage doesn't pass. And so again, we've been very fortunate since 1994 that it's been um, you know, supported and that it's moved forward. Um, it is you know, a significant amount of money, it's about $11 million a year, um, and ultimately that is for our general operations, allows us to do, we have flexibility around that, but then we have the bond, and the bond is the very large projects that we do, our buildings that we actually create, um, the large the large items that you see, the building of new schools, that's bond. Um, sinking fund is different. Sinking fund is more of your small scale projects, the purchase of properties or um, other items that can help enhance your, uh, your school facilities, and certainly what we've spent a lot of money on is uh, security improvements. Uh, those are things that were in the sinking fund legislation laws back in uh, 2016 when this was approved. So that is what we can spend money on. And again, there's some changes with that, and that's why we're looking to do a replacement right. millage with the sinking fund. Okay. So the election is February 27th. Um, what will people see on the ballot? You said there are two separate items on the ballot? Yes, there are two separate items, and we did this uh, during the presidential primary so that it would be no cost to the school district or to the voters. Uh, we have options as to when we do our, our uh, millages, but we did uh, choose that for that reason and because we do think there will be a good voter turnout and we want people to weigh in on, on these. Um, so as far as the, the two, yes, we are, do, we are doing replacements for both of them. They're both 10 years. Um, they both will uh, continue at the exact same rates where they currently are today. 
So those, uh, you know, homeowners, business owners, everybody maintains the rates at which they currently are for both of these things. Um, and it would be the 18 mils and it would be the um, 1.8862 is what the sinking fund is. And um, so we really tried to keep that in mind as we were asking, at, you know, having the ask. The voters will see uh, two separate pieces of language because they are two separate millages. Um, we will ask the voters for the sinking fund to authorize, or excuse me, for the non-homestead to authorize 21 mills. The school district can never levy more than 18, but that gives us a buffer for uh, the Headley uh, Amendment that's <coughs> in the Michigan Constitution that annually ticks those types of things down. Um, and that's why we're doing a replacement because when this was approved uh, back in uh, 14, the non-homestead, it has ticked down because of the Headley and it's really close to that 18 and we run the risk of our final year of being below 18, which would mean we wouldn't get the full student funding uh, for that year. Or we go back to the voters in a separate election to ask for them to approve it for one year. And that doesn't seem to be a fiscally responsible thing to do. That's mm -hmm. smart. So what's on your slate? What would you like to see happen? Or what does the district have planned over the next 10 years or so? What are some high priority uh, things you want to tackle? Well, 10 years is a long time, you know, <laughs> so we, we do a strategic plan for five years, and those five years, it seems like it's a really long time. Uh, obviously, we are in the middle of, um, you know, the bond, and the bond is a really big piece of what we do in the school district um, with the improvements and so on. Our largest scale projects are really completed. We have, uh, we'll start our planning uh, for the next, next three years. Um, of the bond this month where that actually impacts uh, Scripps, the old high school, mm -hmm. um, and then, or excuse me, um, the CERC. The CERC, CERC yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then that we call it the Scripps campus, high school campus, but we're gonna work on, try to work on the traffic flow there. Um, and then the high school facility, there's some needs there that we have. Paint Creek Elementary is, is, uh, is another area that we'll have some needs. But academically, we continue to, to push and um, really try to uh, you know, bring in the new technologies. You know, the AI piece has scared a lot of people, but we've, we've embraced it and tried to help our staff um, understand how to utilize that and how to help uh, our students utilize that as a resource. Um, that's part of what we do. Um, so, I mean, overall, we're continuing to try to uh, get more kids into trades, uh, and those types of those careers. You know, we have children that go off to, to college. You know, it depends on what the families, you know, want for their children, what the children want for themselves. But we do try to get them to their maximum potential. So as far as like 10 years, that's really hard to say because honestly, we're, we're, uh, we are getting students prepared for jobs that don't even exist yeah. right now. Right. Wow. So that'll continue to evolve. You know, it's amazing. I, I came out to this community in late 93, so it's been over 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And I still think of the high school as being the new high school. Right, right. And my yeah. brain is lot. new yeah. high school. But it's closing in on 30 years. Right. Yeah. What are you seeing at the high school? Is, is, is there anything that needs to be addressed at the high school, or do you sort of knock those down as things happen. How's, how's the high school holding up in these 30 years? Well, just like any, any facility that's 30 years old, it needs repairs. And that's why the, we have the sinking fund currently in place. That's why we need to continue to have the sinking fund because it really helps us with some of those small scale projects. Uh, and maintenance items and things, you know, the roof, you know, yeah. we know we're gonna have issues with that. We gotta address that. The parking lots, we've gotta address that. Um, like weather one. like this causes havoc, um, <laughs> you know, so we have to do those kinds of things. And again, that sinking fund money, those are the types of projects that we can do so we don't have to use a general operating fund, which is how we pay for our staff, how we pay for our uh, student programs and all of that. Um, you know, when you look at the high school, it's a beautiful facility, but there's always ways to freshen up, make it look nicer. You, when you start looking at some of the things that other districts have done, and we've certainly done that, um, you know, there's some very large uh, ticket items that you could look at, whether they be performance centers, uh, f you know, field houses, al alternative or uh, auxiliary gyms. I mean, there's just different things, you know, that, that you could do. And again, it just uh, comes with an interest. And what we are really trying to focusing, be focused on in the next three years is, you know, how do we, how do we support the robotics to be able to continue their practices when we remove some of the CERC? And how do we have our athletic teams continue to strive and and thrive and, and do the work that they do and our academic programs continue to be you know on the on the edge
edge all the time and we have 100, 120 plus opportunities uh, course wise for our students. That's going to continue to expand as these jobs evolve and, and uh, our student interests become more known. Throw some numbers at me. I, I know in the late 90s uh, the district was experiencing this boom and they were bringing on new teachers and enrollment was skyrocketing and then it kind of hit a peak and sort of leveled off. Now there's talk of all kinds of new residential development in downtown Lake Orion. What do you see now as far as enrollment district-wise and what direction is it heading? Are you anticipating it going up with this new development, leveling off, or is there a decline right now? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question that doesn't have a great answer, and here's <laughs> the reason why. We know a lot of families have left the state of Michigan, right? So with the families go the children. So when you look at the number of students that are actually in public education, that number in totality has gone down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at our student enrollment, our our upper class, our seniors, juniors, and sophomores, those classes are larger than our incoming kindergarten. So overall, the population ends up going down. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start talking about some of these different residential pieces that come in, we, we have been paying attention to that. And again, with a sinking fund, that allows us to put rooms on, not new buildings, but rooms on if we do have the capacity uh, needs necessary. We have very good class sizes in our district currently, so we know that we have some buffer, so to speak, for new children, and we keep that in mind. We have a school of choice program that allows us to bring children in from outside of the district, but we have in the last uh, year, and we will again, reduce that by about 50%, the number of children we bring in, mm -hmm. expecting that we're gonna have more uh, coming in. So yeah. those projects, a lot of them are, they're there, they're in concept. Some of them, there's lumber out there, and some of them, you know, people are starting to move in. Uh, but until that all really happens, you know, it, it is hard to predict that type of thing. But one of the things that we do have a really good success rate on is the birth rate. And the birth rate continues to go down in our county. And we continue to have, over the last 10 years, we've been really good with our capture rate, with the number of children and the birth rate and, and so on in our public schools. So we spent a lot of time talking about it and uh, we do a pretty good job with projections and we'll, we'll continue to do that. But those are some of the strategies and things that we think about when we go through that. That's awesome. Um, you know, this district wins award after award after award. All the schools do the Blue Ribbon <laughs> Awards oh, yeah. and all that stuff. What can you say to the voters um, who you want to come out to the polls in February about maintaining that, that level of quality? Yeah, and that's really what we're asking people to maintain as far as the expenses on their part. What we are telling them is we're going to maintain and go above. We're, we're going to continue to make our schools greater than they are. Every single day we're looking to try to improve. Uh, and and it's, it's not just about those that have children in our schools. That's about 33% of our, uh, you know, Orient Township population. But we have lots of facility rentals. We have lots of uh, community events that happen within our schools. Their, their property values are directly tied to the success of the schools. Um, make no mistake about it, we have a good reputation and it's about the people that are within our school district and the children that we're serving. Um, and that all comes into place because we have great community support. So it's all intertwined yeah. and you, when you see communities that don't have that support, you see schools that can't bring in the best instructional people, the best uh, educational leaders and those types of things. So we are in a very good cycle and I hope that people understand that, that it's not only about the school system, it's their own properties, it's their own reputation, it's their own services they're gonna have in their township. Uh, it's all very interwoven and we're in a really good spot and I'd hate to see that interrupted. Yeah. Um, there's always a faction out there who's just anti-tax, you yeah. know, I don't want to pay more taxes than I have to, but um, it's for the greater good, right? I mean, yeah. like you just said, it benefits the entire community. Yeah, it really does. And the way schools are uh, funded, we have no option. So since 1994 with Proposal A, we have to have the non-homestead to get full foundation allowance. There's not a lot of ways to create revenue in a school district. We get the, the money from Lansing with the um, uh, per pupil foundation allowance, and then you can do bond and you can do sinking funds. You can try to sell property if you have property. You can do schools of choice, which we do a little bit of schools of choice. You can do shared time services, but those are all really small ways to get money. We have about a $100 million budget uh, that we work from, 
put a lot of that money, the over $10 million that the state gave us last year, our $100 million budget, it wasn't for us to spend. It was to turn around and put it into the retirement system. So we couldn't even use that for our people. So mm -hmm. it's just really complicated. And yes, it, it hurts paying taxes. But the thing that I would say is that we've been very thoughtful in that we are not increasing uh, the the levies for the next 10 years with these replacements, they will remain exactly where they're at today. Um, now your home values hopefully will go up, so you might see a little bit of an increase that way, but what we are actually levying will not go up for the next decade with these replacements. So people can look at it as an assurance that there's gonna be some stability for them, because um, it's the only way we can get money. So we're gonna have to you know, continue to try to uh, find ways and get ways to, to get money, and there's very limited uh, ways and avenues. Now, in the documents that we have, yeah. the term non-homestead uh -huh. means not necessarily this is going to impact homeowners. This Correct. This affects businesses, uh, second homes, rental property, and vacant land. So, Correct. So right. that's not necessarily coming out of, f from homeowners. Correct. No. The PRE, primary residence exemption, any of your properties, your, your primary home, is not part of that 18 mil. So even though you don't have to pay that, you get the vote that it gets approved or not approved. Uh, so that's, again, part of the proposal A strategy was everybody gets to vote on it, a fewer people pay for it, so it's gonna get supported in communities. I think you know that was yeah. kind of the mindset with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. That's great. Yeah. So that's, the election is February 27th. Yes. Is there anything else gonna be on that ballot or is that gonna be the only issue that people are asking to go out and vote on that day? I'm not sure. Don't know. It's a is presidential it? primary. Yeah. Is so oh, that's all okay. yeah. yeah, there, yep, there is. Yep, it's a presidential primary, and that was one of our strategies when we looked at it, is what other asks are there in the community? We're not familiar with any additional local asks, you know, when you look at, you know, some of the different um, levies that, that, are, yeah. that are up. So, yeah. Good, um, good. I, I will say, just on a personal note, um, this is, I have four dragons. My oldest graduated in 2011 and then I had a 21 and a 22 and then now I have an eighth grader coming up to the high school. One of the reasons we moved here was because of the schools and mm -hmm. I have never regretted that decision at all. At, I mean, you know, I know you got emails from me during the pandemic because I was being an obnoxious band mom, but anyway, it's, it, it, I, I cannot speak more highly of the education that my children have gotten and the level of care and concern that they've gotten from administration, from their teachers. It, I, I, I'm just a, a, an impressed parent and I fully support this. Like I, you know. Well, I, we appreciate that. You have to, you have to invest in, in the kids in your, in your community, you yeah. know. You just really do. So uh, yeah, I hear that all the time that people, when they make a decision on where to live, schools can yeah, be a huge absolutely. factor in that. Absolutely. And you know, I like to use the phrase "quality of life." That the absolutely. schools contribute to the quality quality of life here in Lake Orion. And it's circular too. If you have, if you have a strong business community that gets support from the families in the community, it's all paying. It's all in this the system. I used to say this you know, at the chamber all the time. If you've got strong businesses, you're gonna have strong nonprofits and you're gonna have, yeah. uh, it's all yeah. together. It yeah. has to be, and if you mess with any bit of that ecosystem, it, you just don't have the kind of community that we have, yeah. so. Yeah, and what I really what I wanna emphasize is I want people to be educated about what we're asking yeah. and what we've done. We've really been great stewards of the money for our, for our community, and we have it all laid out there on the website. We, yeah. uh, If you go to our website in the middle, um, there's an election tab. So that election tab will get you to, to all the Q&A, to get you to the presentations, get you to how you know voters you know vote, how they pay for taxes, where they vote, uh, how we've spent the sinking fund dollars that we've had, how we've spent the bond dollars mm -hmm. that we've had. That's really the bottom line and I want people to know all the things that we've done so that they know all of the things that we will continue to do uh, as leaders in the in the community. So that's like orionschools.org, is you got that it. correct? You got it. All right, so yeah, head to that website if you have any more questions. I'm sure you can call this gentleman yes, personally for sure. if yeah. you have any questions. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Um, it should be a bat phone directly to him. <laughs> well, here's a great, great strategy is to get a hold of our communications uh, director, Mark Snyder. He has a communications <laughs> account because what he does, he does a wonderful thing of either helping people get to the, the information yeah 
or to somebody that can answer the question. It doesn't have to necessarily come to me. We have a great team that's sure. that's ready and willing to serve. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So February twenty seventh, head uh, head to the polls and determine the uh, fate of Lake Orion Community Schools. Yes, absolutely. All right. Yes, Thanks for coming folks. down. I appreciate Thank you. it. Appreciate I hope you we help get me. the word out. All right.